Tabitha, Tabitha, wait up. Tabitha winced and slowed her pace a tiny bit. She didn't want to talk with Anna. Not now. Not with the news she'd just heard. News she was sure Anna was wanted to dissect, going over every juicy detail with delight. Like most small towns, everyone knew everyone. Tabitha, Anna, and Mary were the only girls in this Nazareth about the same age. They'd been friends and shared secrets as long as any of them could remember. Tabitha and Anna sometimes had fights, and Mary was always the peacemaker between them. Even as Anna's tongue grew sharper and she followed more and more in her mother's gossipy ways, she never used it on or around Mary. Once her fathers had started to set up marriages for them, it just got worse. But Mary wasn't here now, and Tabitha knew she was in for an earful. Plus... Did you hear? About Mary, I mean. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. After all she said over the years to go and do that. Anna, have you talked with Mary yourself? Of course not. What would I say? She and Joseph are only betrothed, and yet, well, you can see. Anna, you know how hard it is. You and Nathan, me and Josiah. This year-long wait before marriage is tough. You know of others who've had an early baby, haven't, don't you? Like your own sister? Anna reddened a little. But have you heard what she's saying about it? That it isn't Joseph's? That an angel came and talked with her and told her she was going to have a baby without a man? I don't remember Mary ever telling a lie before. And to stop, start with a whopper like this one? Tabitha sighed. She really didn't want to talk with Anna about it. But who else was there? Her mother just shushed her if she started to say anything. And her other siblings were too young. Anna at least had an older sister that she could talk with, but that wasn't always the best thing for Anna either, she reflected. Well, I've talked with her, said Tabitha, and she's really convinced of her story. It's so confusing. I don't think Mary's lying. She really believes it. But she should know better. Her story just can't be true. Well, Joseph knows the truth, or else why would he still be marrying her? And real quick, like, too. If the baby wasn't his, he'd get rid of Mary really fast. He was thinking about it. I know he came and talked with my father a little while ago. They've been friends a long time, even with the age difference. I wasn't supposed to hear, but as I walked by the room, I heard the word divorce. They both looked really serious. And then the next thing I heard was that the wedding was moved up. And then I found out, you know. So he must have changed his mind for some reason. Anyway, I'm happy for Mary and Joseph. They're both really nice people, good people. Nobody's had a bad word to say about either of them until this. So I'm still going to be friends with them anyway, no matter what people say. I don't know. I mean, yeah, they're fun and good, and yeah, Mary stuck up for me when I say the wrong thing and hurt people. Don't look so surprised. I know my tongue runs at both ends and says things it shouldn't. And I know Mary smoothed over lots of things for me, but this, this is just so out of character for her. And to not be ashamed of it, that's even stranger. She always feels really badly whenever she does anything wrong, even a little thing. And yet she's walking around with that glow that my mother always talks about, not hiding anything. It's really weird. I know. She's so convinced that she was visited by an angel and told that she'd give birth to a child conceived by God. I'm scared for her, Anna. What if she's really crazy? I can't think of any other explanation. Yet everything else, she's just fine. I don't know what else to think. I mean, it can't be true, can it? Tabitha, Tabitha, wait up! Twelve years and five children hadn't slowed Anna's tongue or dulled her curiosity or her drive to know and discuss anything and everything going around around Nazareth. Tabitha had quit expecting her to change, and though she was careful about what she said around Anna, they were still friends. Besides, all their children, hers and Tabitha's and Mary's, ran together in a pack. If it wasn't for Jesus being the oldest and setting a good example, Tabitha didn't know how they'd keep the kids under control, especially her Joel and Anna's Thomas. What little monkeys they were, especially when they got together. She put down her water jar and waited for Anna to catch up. I don't have a long time to talk, Anna. With Mary and Joseph and their children gone, I've left my Judith in charge of the younger ones, and I don't dare leave them alone very long. I didn't realize how much I trusted Jesus to take care of them all till they were, all, they were away for longer than I figured they would be. Anna didn't seem too worried about Tabitha's urgency. Haven't you heard? They just got back now. And I can't believe why they were late. It was Jesus. First time I've known him to do something wrong. Well, but just because I don't know about it doesn't mean he's perfect. I mean, he can't be. He has to have his faults just like everyone else, right? But now, what a hubbub he's caused. Jesus? He's the last one I would think would cause problems. 
I know. That's what makes it so much worse. And in the temple, too. The temple? I know Mary and Joseph always take their family down for the feast. They're very religious about everything. I always thought their kids would be very respectful there. Especially Jesus. What happened? Well, you know how the group always leaves at one time? Well, Mary and Joseph just figured Jesus was somewhere else in the group, and they traveled a whole day before they found out he wasn't with them. Then they had to walk all the way back to Jerusalem and stay there till they found him. You know how much that would have cost them? You'd think Jesus would know better. I mean, Joseph is just a carpenter, and they aren't rolling into Neri. And Jesus is old enough to know about money, and... Tabitha interrupted. What happened? Jerusalem is a large and dangerous place. Where did they find him? I told you, in the temple. He was sitting right there with the teachers and the priests and everything and was talking with them. And they were listening to what he said, too. At least that's what Mary said. But you know how she is about Jesus and how special she thinks he is. But that isn't the worst part. The synagogue meter leaders are meeting about it now. The leaders? Are Mary and Joseph in trouble? Are they okay? No, well, maybe. At least Jesus is. Tabitha was getting frustrated. Just tell me what happened. What's the problem? Well, it was what Jesus said when they found him. Of course they asked him why he was still there and how they were supposed to find him in all Jerusalem. And you know what he said? No, I don't. That's what you're supposed to be telling me. Well, don't get all mad at me. I'm just telling you because I know you're Mary's friend and all. Tabitha took a deep breath. Okay, I'm sorry. But what did he say? He said, don't you know that I have to be in my father's house? My father? He called God his own father. Tabitha's face drained of all color. Oh no, she whispered. This was blasphemy. To say my father about God was the same as claiming to be his son. And that meant claiming to be the same as God. And blasphemy was punishable by death. Oh no. Anna said, well, I don't think they'd do anything really drastic. After all, he isn't of age yet. Probably just a really stern warning. And of course, Mary and Joseph will have to be told to teach their children better. But just think about it. After all these years, Jesus rebelling and doing something like that, I never would have thought it of him, of all people. Tabitha was very quiet. You know, I'm thinking back here. Remember what Mary said about Jesus before he was born? That he was conceived by God himself? And how good Jesus is? I can't recall him ever doing something bad. And yet all the other kids, and the adults too, really like him. And now this. He knows better than to say something that makes himself equal with God. Why would he do that? Do you think there's any chance that it might be true? Tabitha, Tabitha, please wait for me. The voice was tired and weak and a bit breathless. Tabitha stopped in her walk towards the market and walked back towards her friend. The past couple of decades had been very hard on the lively girl and the active woman that Anna had been. It was hard to see how slowly she walked, even with a stick to help her, and how weak she was. Tabitha came close and was going to give her a hug, but Anna warded her off with her hand. No, don't touch me. I know you have your grandson's coming-of-age ceremony next week, and it isn't worth your doing all the cleansing ceremonies just to give me a hug. I know you would if you could, and that's enough for me. Tabitha motioned to a wall on the side of the road. Let's sit down over here and have a chat. It's been a while since I've seen you out. I just haven't felt up to it. But I need to go to the market today. There's really nothing left in my house to eat, so I have to go. Don't Nathan or the children send you anything? Don't they still take care of you, despite your illness? Anna couldn't help the tears that quietly gathered in the corners of her eyes and ran down her pale cheeks. They used to. When this first started, when I lost our last baby, you know, Nathan did everything he could to try to help. We went to all kinds of doctors all over Galilee and down to Jerusalem. I never told anyone, but we even went to Gentiles who said they could help, but nothing stopped the bleeding. It was so hard on Nathan. He couldn't go to the synagogue or be involved in any of the discussions with the rabbis because our house was unclean, and you know how he loves that. At first he sent food and still took care of me as much as he could, but lately even that has stopped. I think he now believes that this was brought on by some sin I had done, or I'm still doing. I wish it was, because then I could quit it and repent and sacrifice to have it forgiven. But I've prayed and thought and done everything I can to be right before God, and nothing helps. Oh, Tabitha, I'm just so sick and tired of living. Tabitha sat quietly by as her friend wept in hopelessness. She could and would offer to do to Anna's shopping for her in a few minutes, when Anna was quiet again. But that wasn't what Anna really needed. Anna needed to be whole. 
healed. And Tabitha couldn't do that for her. Tabitha wanted to suggest going to see Jesus, but every time she'd mentioned him before, Anna had got angry and left. So she sat quietly. Then Anna said, You know, Tabitha, I've even thought about going to see Jesus. That surprises you, doesn't it? I know you. You want to tell me to go see him, but you're afraid of how I will react. Again. But you know, as I've sat in my house so sick with nothing ahead of me to hope for, I've been thinking. Jesus always was different, even as a little boy. He had love for everyone, even sharp-tongued old Anna. I didn't like what I saw in me when I was around him, and I felt that he saw the same things in me that I did. But I never felt that he condemned me for them, but that he thought I could be better. I knew I couldn't, so I began to avoid him as much as I could. I'd cross the street rather than meet him, and I never went down the road the carpenter shop was on. But when he left home and went teaching, the stories about him healing people kept coming back. I didn't want them to be true. What would it mean if they are true? Tabba, do you think he might really be God as well as man? I don't know, Anna. In some ways, it all fits, right from the first time Mary told me she was pregnant. But in other ways, it seems so impossible. How and why? I don't know either, but you know, I think I'm finally desperate enough to find out. I heard he was at Capernaum. I know it's a long walk, and I don't know if I can do it now as sick as I am, but I'm going to give it a try. If what they say is true, if I see Jesus really heal people with my own eyes, then I'll know he can heal me too. It's my only hope, Tabitha. I'm going to go. Oh, how I want it to be true. Tabitha, Tabitha, wait for me. The happy, healthy voice of Anna rang out as Tabitha wearily left her house to do her morning errands. Tabitha didn't stop. It was so wrong that Anna should be happy today. She'd been like this ever since Jesus had healed her. Tabitha had been so happy for her then. Happy that Anna had been healed just by touching Jesus' cloak. And even more happy that Jesus had turned in love and talked with her, letting her know that she hadn't stolen her healing or made him unclean by her touch, but that he was happy to make her well again. Anna had believed in Jesus, had believed that Jesus was God. And now this, everything was wrong. Everything had fallen apart. Didn't Anna know that they crucified Jesus, that he was dead, that everything they thought and hoped and come to believe over the last 30 plus years was wrong? And Anna was happy? No, Tabitha was not going to stop and listen to that voice calling her to wait anymore. She didn't want to hear any more gossip. No, she had to be fair. Anna didn't gossip anymore, not since she'd been healed. But all she talked about was Jesus and Tabitha didn't want to hear about Jesus right now either. It hurt too much. She ignored the summons and she walked faster. Tabitha, you made me run to catch you. Tabitha, you're still sad. Haven't you heard? Heard what? That the Romans killed Jesus because our priest turned him over to them? That almost the whole city of Jerusalem called out to have him crucified? That it just about killed my good friend Mary to watch her son die? Yeah, I heard all that. My Judith was there with Mary. She saw it all and came home to tell me. How can you be happy knowing that everything we'd hoped for, everything we've come to believe was a lie? He healed you and now he's dead. How does that make any sense? Tabitha kept walking very fast because it was either that or collapse in tears and she didn't dare let the tears start for fear they'd never stop. Tabitha, then you haven't heard the rest of it. Tabitha, he's alive. He really is. Judith saw him die, Anna. She saw the Roman soldiers spear him, water and blood pour out. No one could live after that. He's dead, Anna. We just have to accept it. Tabitha, listen to me. Anna grabbed her arm and pulled her to a stop on the dusty road. Jesus did die. My Nathan was there. He saw it too. But Jesus didn't stay dead. He came back to life and people have seen him. Really. Both in Jerusalem and up here in Galilee. He's alive, Tabitha. I know it. Anna sure had changed over the past few years. Going from mocking the idea that Jesus was different from other people to believing that he really was God after healing her. But now she was going too far. Dead people are dead people, no matter how much you believe in them. Wanting something to be true doesn't make it true, Anna. Dead people don't come back to life. They don't walk and talk and eat. And even if he did, what's the point? Why would he die just to come, come to life again? Why didn't he stay alive in the first place? 
or stay dead for that matter. No, it doesn't make any sense. There's no point to it, and I'm not going to be fooled again into believing that some man is really God and can help us get to know God better. Tabitha angrily turned away and kept marching down the street. Tabitha, Anna called after her, please stop. I know how you feel because that's how I felt yesterday, but I have more to tell you. Please listen. <sighs> Tabitha stopped. It wasn't Anna's fault that Jesus was dead, so why was she taking her own hurt out and anger out on her friend? She turned slowly around. Okay, I'm sorry I spoke harshly to you, Anna, but it still doesn't make any sense. Why don't we sit down here while you explain more? Thanks for listening. I know it sounds unbelievable, but the story makes sense when you know it all. My Nathan just got home last night and told me all about it. I told you he was there when Jesus was crucified, but he stayed in Jerusalem for a few days after Jesus was killed. Ever since I was healed and Nathan came back home, he's followed Jesus, sometimes openly, sometimes quietly. But he heard a lot of Jesus' teachings, and now that Jesus is alive again, they're starting to make more sense. Let me explain. You know how the religious leaders have been after Jesus for years now, but do you know why? Blasphemy, I assume, claiming to be God. And now that he's dead, we know that he wasn't, so he should have been stoned, not crucified, if the law was done, right? Yes, he claimed to be God, but how? In many ways. One of the ways was that he said he could forgive sins. Think about that, Tabitha. Sins forgiven, never to be guilty again, to be completely clean. That's what I felt when Jesus told me that my faith had healed me. It wasn't just my body that was healed, but my soul. For the first time in my life, I felt really clean inside, that I could meet God himself and worship him purely and not be condemned to Sheol right away. I know inside me that he did forgive my sins, and only God can do that, so I know Jesus is God. So then why did he die? It doesn't make sense. But it does. Don't you see the significance of when he died? It was the day before Passover, when we remember how God saved our nation by having the angel of death pass over all the houses that had obeyed his instructions. The houses that had killed a lamb and put the blood on the doorposts of the house. The lamb was sacrificed. It was innocent, but it died so the people didn't. Don't you see? It was all a picture so we could understand what's happening now. Jesus died so we don't have to. He was the perfect sacrifice for us. If he hadn't died, we'd have to pay for our own sin. He really was perfect. No sin at all. Think back. Can you ever remember Jesus doing anything wrong? Anything at all? She paused for a minute. Me neither. So he really could be the perfect sacrifice for us. But if he stayed dead, how would we know who he really was? And if he stayed dead, he would have lied because he told his disciples many times that he'd be killed and then rise again. But they didn't get it. Only after he was killed did they remember that even then they didn't dare to believe it. Even when some of them saw Jesus, others wouldn't believe it till they saw him themselves. Even my Nathan saw him. There was a crowd of about 500 people and they all saw Jesus. He really is alive. If he wasn't really God, he'd have to have stayed dead. But he didn't. He walks and he talks and he even eats, according to the disciples. So he really is alive. And if he really is alive, that means he really is God. And if he really is God, then that means he can really forgive sins, Tabitha said slowly. Anna nodded. Yes, we can have our sins forgiven and stand clean before God Almighty. Jesus asks us to commit our lives to following him and obeying what he says. But since he's God, that's just what's due him anyway. Because of his death and resurrection, we can be right with God and know that we're going to heaven. Isn't that amazing? Tabitha sat quietly, thinking about what she'd just heard. Anna, there's too much here to digest all at once. I need to think about it. I don't know if I can believe something that's so... Unbelievable that Jesus, my friend Mary's son, is really Lord of the universe. <laughs> that someone I babysat and asked to babysit my own children needs to be worshipped and obeyed just like God does. There's so much to consider. 
I need some time. Time to figure out a few things. I mean, how is this going to affect the rest of my life if it really is true?